like I said, it's in the DNA, and that's some pretty remarkable DNA right there. And now we'll move on to our Voices of Conscience Awards. There are many past honorees, individuals, and organizations who are still stalwart allies of ours and who are here tonight, ranging from Lois, one of your police officer clients, I hope you had a chance to see her, to lots of organizations we work with on every issue. Would you please wave your programs if you've received a Voices of Conscience Award in the past from us? Yeah, yep, see? These are great, great folks. Thank you all. And would you please join me in, join me in welcoming Danelle Dixon Thayer from our Board of Governors. Good evening. As, as Jamie said, my name is Danelle Dixon Thayer, and I have been on the Public Advocates Board of Governors for four years now, and it has been such an honor. So I first want to thank you for coming tonight. It's so nice to see so many familiar faces in the audience, and we're so grateful that we have such support, so thank you. What I get to do tonight is one of the, the best honors of the evening from my perspective. I get to introduce the first Voices of Conscious Award, and that goes to Leo Martinez. I want to preface this by saying they've limited my time to talk, so I can't actually stand up here and say everything that I would want to say about Leo, but we leave it to him to actually, we leave it to him because you guys want to hear from him and not me. But I don't want to spend time during this introduction going through the list of things that Leo has done, and I would encourage you to please look through the Leo's bio because it's actually quite impressive. And in there, you'll actually see his achievements, some of which are his name on the Supreme Court case that it's a victory for us. Um, his leadership in the public broadcasting, and his commitment to creating opportunities in education and strengthening communities. Mary Kane was the dean at Hastings when I was there, and she worked with Leo for uh, a very long time. And I think she says it best when she said that he is an uber public citizen. So I think that's the label we'll put on him for the evening. What I want to emphasize is how Leo fights for social justice and equity. And I think it's important, and I think he's, just, he's unique amongst many of us who try to attach our name to something and try to give ourselves credit. And that's actually not what he does. He does this, he, he fights this fight by listening. And he does this by sharing credit with the many people who help him and help the organizations to achieve. Um, he does it by helping others to find their strengths and then making sure those strengths get noticed at the right time by the right people. Um, Think about it. How many people do you know who have not only accomplished great things, but have also made everyone around them greater? And as a first year law student at Hastings, um, this is what Leo did for me. And continued from my law school career, and clearly we also are on the Board of Governors together, and he is the one who introduced me to this organization. When I was in law school, uh, he seamlessly balanced his dual role for me as an ally, as well as a challenger. And he pushed me, and he supported me, and he helped me to achieve. And that's what he does seamlessly with so many other organizations that he's attached to. I've seen him work the same magic on the board. He listens, and he only speaks up if he needs to. And he helps us to get to the right place many times. And for this, I thank him. And I know that many of my other colleagues on the board also thank him. So he does all of this with impeccable grace. And with that, I'd like to introduce Leo, who I call my friend, and that's the most important role from my perspective. As those who know me well know, uh, it's uh, not often I'm struck silent. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I have three things to say only. Uh, first, it is a privilege to be a part of this great organization, to participate in tonight's event. Uh, actually, what I was going to say originally was, to sh uh, was that uh, I shared uh, Public Advocate's 40th birthday, but I didn't think I could get away with it, so I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Uh, and it's also a privilege to be in the presence of so many friends, uh, including my very patient wife. And it is because of all of you that we are justified in feeling strong and great about our work. Second, 
in, in a very real sense, uh, this award comes too late. Uh, and it comes late because I have already been honored. I have been honored uh, with the ability to lead this board for the last eight years. It's been an honor to carry out the work of the founders of Public Advocates and to have succeeded on the board such great people as Professor Derek Bell, broadcaster uh, Belva Davis, and my friend and mentor Miguel Mendez, to name but a few. It has been an honor to serve with our current board members. And these are Fred Altshuler of altshuler Burzon, Fred Alvarez of wilson Sonsini, uh, my former student, Danelle Dixon-Thayer of ter Terra Firma, Marty Glick of Howard Rice, Professor Joan Harrington of the Santa Clara University School of Law, uh, Dolores Jimenez uh, of Kaiser Medical Center, Anne O'Leary of the UC Berkeley School of Law, Rohit Singla of Munger Tolls and Olson, Abdi Sultani of the ACLU of Northern California, and our newest board member, Chris Young of Kecker and Van Est. I am grateful to my, for, to my fellow board members for their support and for their patience with me, and I thank them for their leadership and their devotion to the cause. Now, as I end my term as board chair, I am proud to tell you that I will be succeeded in July by Professor Joan Harrington. Uh, whom you'll meet in a few minutes. Joan is Director of Academic Development at the Santa Clara University School, School of Law and comes to us with a rich background in nonprofit and private practice encompassing trial, appellate, and general counsel positions. She will be terrific. Finally, finally, I have been honored to work with our Worth Her Weight in Gold President Jamie Studley and our hardworking and dedicated staff. It has been an honor to be associated with and to support their fine work. Now, third, at our board meeting last month, there were two noteworthy items mentioned. There was a report on our efforts in Rene versus Duncan to persuade the Ninth Circuit that the term highly qualified teachers under the No Child Left Behind Act did not, I underline, did not include recent college graduates who are in their initial training. Uh, it's unbelievable, actually, when you think about it, that we actually had to make this argument. And, and the irony is we had actually lost the first time we made it. The case was up before the, the Ninth Circuit on rehearing, where we were again arguing that newly minted college graduates who are in their probationary period are not qualified teachers. Now, the other report related to our mass transit case, Derensburg versus Metropolitan Transportation Commission, in which a judge essentially turned a blind eye to well-documented and persistent racial disparities and instead took aim at what he described as hopelessly outdated racial categories. Again, unbelievable. Now, Either of these two items you know, might actually be funny if so much were not at stake. And, and as I was mulling this over during the board meeting, uh, I was reminded of a fabulous poem by Ethan Cohen, uh, Ethan Cohen of Cohen Brothers fame. And it begins like this. The loudest have the final say. The wanton win. The rash hold sway. The realists' rules of order say the drunken driver has the right of way. Uh, and by the way, I commend this uh, to your reading if you have the time. Now, this somewhat fatalistic poem cleverly tells us that it is a useful thing to understand and appreciate that the world is permeated by this omnipresent mindlessness and irrationality. Now, whether in connection with public advocates' uh, fine work, in connection with education, or even in public broadcasting, there is always mindlessness and uncritical thinking to fight and to oppose. Now, in telling you this, 
Uh, I don't mean to be dark or pessimistic. Uh, on the contrary, it is an incredibly rewarding thing to do to make headway against mindlessness. Here at Public Advocates, we are fortunate to be able to witness the thoughtful strategy, the determined advocacy, and inspiring community collaborations through which our remarkable staff pursues Public Advocates' mission of social justice, civil rights, and community empowerment. Now, I have seen that same kind of effort to be an integral part in other arenas. Uh, KQED's resurgence, uh, for example, uh, is, 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 is one such example, I'm sorry, is one such example. And I am proud to say that KQED is now the operator of the most listened to public uh, radio station and the most watched public television station in this country. I have seen this same kind of effort allow Public Radio Capital, a tiny organization that did not exist 10 years ago, become a catalyst for expanding public radio's reach for more than 200 public radio stations uh, uh, to acquire new channels, to preserve existing stations, to finance expansion, and to introduce new programming. I saw this same effort in my front row seat in witnessing UC Hastings' success before the US Supreme Court, arguing for the simple right of our gay and lesbian students to have access to all of the programs the college supported and to which it lent its name. Absolutely. In short, I have been privileged, I have been honored to see firsthand what good advocacy combined with the broad support of, of like-minded people can accomplish. In all of this, we and our community are the better for the support and collaboration that you and others provide to support the opposition to mindlessness and uncritical thought. It is truly a humbling uh, experience to be a part of all of this. I can only offer you uh, the sincerest of thanks. Thanks to all of you.